Hello class, I'm going to do an overview of activity B for the Big Bang Theory Spectral Analysis Lab on Gizmo that you guys have been working on. And if we go through the introduction down to the goals here and we get down to check, it says we're going to be taking a look at the Spectra tab. So let's go to the Gizmo. And if we look here, we've been collecting, the first part you'd collected the data from stars here. Now we're going to go to the Spectra tab and it specifically references using C197. So you should have 10 of these. I've only done the first four as an example, but you should have all 10 stars in here uh, before you do this part. And we go to C197, drag it over, drop it in here. And this is gonna allow us to compare these two uh, spectral, um, uh, spectra rather. And so each of these dark lines represents what's called an absorption line. This is uh, light that's being absorbed by a layer of gas in the star. It's not a getting, it's not getting out. And so those lines are missing. But what that does for scientists is it allows them to see a fingerprint of the star. And so if we were to try to line up these first two lines, well, it does say we can zoom in. It's kind of hard to see. We're going to try lining up a couple of the lines. Let's zoom in so we can see more clearly. This is our dark line here. This is our absorption line. And if we line this one up right there, about right on there, and if we line this one up, maybe about there. Okay, so what we have is that clearly relative to our reference or our laboratory spectra, what we would see in the laboratory of uh, light coming through the spectrum, compared to this star, C197, is that clearly there's a slight shift, at least when we zoom in, to the right. Now, it wasn't very noticeable when we went back to here. We don't really notice it. We barely see anything. All these lines seem to line up pretty nicely. But if we zoom in on this section, we see, oh, it's moved it again. Let's move it back. Oh, nope, there it was. It was right there. And come about on it there or so, Ooh. right, ah. that's close, pretty good. So right about there, uh, and we can see that there's a slight shift of C197 to the right. And so the formula that we use for this is listed down here and we're answering our questions. Uh, you can go through and answer these questions based on what you're seeing in the star, observing in the star. And then you get down to this part and there's a calculation to figure out redshift. And the redshift is going to be equal to, or the shift, I probably would be better uh, to say, is going to be equal to the lambda observed, or the wavelength of the observed, which is this one, the observed star, divided by the wavelength of the reference. So the wavelength of the observed, lambda observed, divided by the lambda reference, or wavelength of the reference, minus one. And when you do this calculation, you'll end up with a small decimal number, something 0 0.002 something. Uh, it doesn't matter if you get it exact as long as it's close. Uh, now, you can also use the redshift calculator here, click, and it does the math for you. Um, and what this is more importantly showing us, though, is that for this star, C197, the spectral lines are shifted to the right, which means that the star's wavelength is shifted towards the right or towards the Let's go back, zoom out again, towards the red end of the spectrum. That means that this star, or this, the light coming from this star, is coming from an object that is moving away from us, is causing the wavelengths to expand as each subset, uh, subsequent wavelength is given off a little further away. And so the difference between each wave is slightly further apart. And so the wavelength is expanding. If we had gotten a negative number here for the redshift, that would have indicated that, in fact, this line here would have been to the left of the reference line, indicating a blue shift. That would have meant that the object was coming towards us. How much it's redshifted or blue shifted would tell us how fast it's moving towards or away from us. So you're going to go back through and uh, do your uh, calculation there, put in your information, and go through and answer the rest of the questions. And hopefully, that'll be enough to get you through this. Um, put something in the comments. You can put public comments up there. Let me know how it's going and what you're having uh, specific questions on so I can try to answer them. All right? Good luck. Keep looking up.